Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we'll be discussing the structure and function of our body's joints. So what we'll do specifically is start by discussing the terminology used to describe joint function. First, we have the term synarthrosis, and this term refers to joints that are immovable. Second, we have the term amphiarthrosis, and this term refers to joints that are slightly movable. And thirdly, we have the term diarthrosis, which refers to joints that are freely movable. Next, let's discuss the terminology used to describe joint structure. First, we have the term fibrous, and this term refers to joints that are formed or are connected by various types of connective tissue. Second, we have the term cartilaginous, which means or refers to joints that are formed or are joined together by cartilage. And third is the term synovial, which refers to a variety of joints that have a unique set of features. In fact, there are six characteristics of these joints that we need to make note of. All synovial joints include cartilage, a capsule, a cavity, ligaments, synovial fluid, and bursa. With these characteristics on the board, let's identify where we'll find these and their purpose within the joint. First up is the synovial cavity. And one of the first things we should note here is that the term cavity refers to an opening. But this opening is filled by synovial fluid and is enclosed in a capsule. Next, we have a bursa. And bursa are fluid-filled pockets of synovial fluid. Their function is to reduce friction that can occur with movement in a given joint. And although we only see one bursa here, there are multiple bursa within a given joint. Specifically, we'll see some of these bursa between bones, tendons, and or ligaments. Next is the joint capsule and synovial fluid we referenced earlier. But let's focus on the term capsule. This capsule is a thick band of ligamentous tissue and its purpose is to provide stability and support to the joint. As well, its role is to secrete synovial fluid so that the joint is well lubricated. Let's move over to articular cartilage. The cartilage is the surface covering the ends of the bone, and its job is to absorb any compressive forces that may occur to the joint during movement, and along with this, the cartilage helps to reduce the friction that occurs during movement. And lastly, the role and purpose of ligaments are to protect the joint against abnormal joint movement. Let's now switch gears and utilize a chart to help us better understand and commit to memory the structure and function of our joints. Now right before we get started, let's talk about two alternate names or terms that you may hear used to represent the term joints. The first is arthrosis, and the second is articulations. So when and if you hear these terms, you'll know that they are both synonymous for the term joint. Now to our chart. We're going to utilize this chart based on structure and function. And what we'll do next is utilize our terms from earlier to make categories. So representing joint structure, we have fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. And representing joint function, we have synarthrosis, amphiarthrosis, and diarthrosis. Now, let's fill in this chart with some examples of the type of joints we'll see in the human body. Starting in our first box here, the examples we'll list are sutures, followed by gomphosis. And here's what we can do next. In our box to the right, we can place an X through it, and we can do the same for the box on the end. So here's what we mean by this first row. The fibrous joints we have in the body are immovable, and the examples that fit this bill are sutures and gomphosis. And what we also have noted here is that we do not have any cartilaginous or synovial joints within the body that are immovable. Let's go to our second row. The example we'll list here is syndesmosis. And moving over to the box on the right, we have two terms. The first is synchondrosis, 
followed by the term synthesis. Now, moving over to our last box, we can place an X here. So here's what we mean by the second row. Within the body, we only have fibrous and cartilaginous joints that are slightly movable. And we've also noted that we don't have any synovial joints within the body that are slightly movable. Now on to the last row. We can begin by placing an X in the first two boxes. And what this does is signify the fact that we don't have any fibrous or cartilaginous joints in the body that are diarthroses or are freely movable. But we do, however, have several examples in the body that are synovial joints, which are freely movable. The first is arthroidal, followed by condyloidal, inarthroidal, ganglimus, cellar, and finally, trochoidal. Now, having this chart complete is helpful, but let's look at some examples of the terms we've just filled into our chart. Let's start with synarthrosis, or our immovable joints. The first example we need to list are sutures, and for sutures, we need to think about the fibrous connective tissue that joins together the flat bones of the skull. We can note these sutures based on the red lines shown on this image. Next, we also have another type of a movable joint, and the term we use for this is gomphosis. And by this term, we're referring to the manner in which the root of the tooth fits into its bony socket within the mandible. And as you take a closer look, you'll see the fibrous connective tissue that secures the tooth. And this fibrous connective tissue is called the periodontal ligament. Next is amphiarthrosis, or what we can refer to as our semi-movable joints. For symphysis, we can refer to the pelvis, because here anteriorly, we have a fibrocartilaginous structure referred to as the pubic symphysis, which allows for very slight movement to occur. As another example for synthesis, we can add the articulation between the vertebrae and the intervertebral disc, which also allows for slight movement to occur. Next, we have the term synchondrosis, and the example here is the cartilage structures we see that connect the ribs to the sternum. And lastly, we also have a syndesmosis. The example here includes what we call a dense fibrous tissue, that connects the bones of the radius and ulna. And although it's not pictured here, we have the same type of dense fibrous tissue that connects the tibia and fibula. Now, it's common that when referring to these, we call them interosseous membranes. Now, moving on to our diarthroses or freely movable joints, Let's begin with the trochoidal joint. This joint is more commonly referred to as a pivot joint, and the movement that we have taking place here includes one segment of the joint that rotates but is maintained in a confined position. Therefore, the movement associated with these joints are rotational in nature. Next is the ganglimus joint. This joint is more commonly referred to as a hinge joint, and this type of joint functions much like a door, only allowing movement in one plane of motion. Those motions in the body would include flexion and extension. The next joint we'll take a look at is the cellar joint, and more commonly, we'll hear this referred to as a saddle joint. An example of where we'll find this in the body is at the carpal metacarpal joint of the thumb, where it allows for movements such as flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. Fourth is an inarthroidal joint. This joint is commonly referred to as a ball and socket joint, and it allows for movements in all planes of motion, allowing motions such as flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and both internal and external rotation. Next is a condyloidal joint, oftentimes referred to as an ellipsoid joint. It permits movement in two planes of motion without rotation. The movements are described as flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. 
And lastly, we have arthroidal joints, which is often referred to as a gliding or plane joint. This includes two flat bone surfaces that are joined together to form a joint. The resulting motion of these joints are gliding movements. The type of movement produced here varies depending on the joint of interest. So let's take another look at our chart once again, and if you will, take a moment to pause the video to review it. And if you have a question or comment, please let me know in the comments section below. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.